Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's Channel and part two of this series. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly recommend you do. In fact, that's the reason why I'm bringing part two as swiftly as I am because I watched the first part a few times and even rather intrigued myself into desiring to bring forth the next part so that I might hear what it's about, you know? And I know that may sound a little fishy, but as I've said before, I really don't put together any script at all. Some scriptures come to mind, I put them up there, I bring them out, and our king guides me wherever he wants me to go. And sometimes I bite on the rain a little, you know, and, and try to get ahead, and then I get lost. So, you know, just please bear with us. A little recapping is, you know, this fella you see over here is a Borg, and he's taken the uh, Captain Picard here prisoner, I do believe, and he's going to turn Picard into a Borg. Now, this is, you know, a definite counterfeit of Yahweh Shema and the inhabitants thereof, okay? This is an imposter of Yahweh Shema. I do believe that Hollywood went ahead or whoever was that is the creator of Star Trek there was led by spirits, okay, that were not of Father Yahweh as on the righteous side. However, Father Yahweh gave all things to his son. All the spirits belong to my king, your king, if you hear the words that I'm bringing forth and can actually see what's being said in this series so far. In no way, shape, or form was I saying, you know, that the Borgs are the inhabitants of Yahweh Shema. No, absolutely not. What they're doing is a little parody here using all their special effects and everything to speak against a civilization that is all of the same mind. They're all of the same collective unity run by their queen Borg as I mentioned in the first part video. And therefore, they are all controlled by the Queen Borg, and therefore they don't have war amongst themselves. However, everyone they come into contact with, they give them the ultimatum to be assimilated or die, okay? That's basically the rule that they, they try to depict here because the scriptures say that if you don't keep the give or take 613 laws that apply to you, which would then show you how you can keep those 10 commandments because there's only a very few on the earth today that are keeping the 10 commandments. Anyone going to church on Sunday, for instance, that's the first day of the week. It has nothing to do with the seventh day Sabbath. The fourth of the Ten Commandments you are commanded to keep. And our Father says, if you don't keep it, you're going to die, okay? So that's what it's showing here that they're depicting that, oh, if you don't become like us, well, you're going to die, okay? And it's coming on the square. But something I really hope that you would have reflected upon was in Revelation chapter 6 wherein I gave you a hint as far as when I believe from what I see the gathering will take place and according to what it had showed here in Revelation 6 verse 1 I'd like to recap from a video in the past where I brought out why I believe this first horseman was the Corona Beer Demic. As it says, Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, authority. Yahshua gave him the, the nod, go for it. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Now, the fella didn't have an arrow. He just had the bow, see? And this fella was not Yahshua. It was the spirit that Yahshua sends. And because of the corona beardemic, you've seen how the entire earth was taken over without a single shot being fired. There was no war that took place over it to conquer the entire earth. Everybody is still in submission with their you know, their Masonic silence rite, you know, going on with the mouth and such being covered. 
but it's great that they wear masks. I, you know, I'm sure it cuts down on the spittle that's in the air. And what better way to bring everyone into conformity than to assimilate you, okay? <laughs> Take your mind off how wonderful the kingdom's going to be. And only those that do obey are going to be there because if there's someone that's not obeying, it's, you know, not the place where it says there's not going to be any tears, no more pain or sorrow, no more suffering. And if somebody's up there sinning, there's pain, there's sorrow, there's suffering, there's tears. Anyway, this fella came, he had a bow, no arrow, and he came to conquer and to conquer. So I believe when that seal was popped, began the beginning of a seven year period of time. And then when you get down here to verses 12 through 17 of Revelation 6, I believe this is just before or just during or just after. It's right near there of the three and a half year mark. When, as it shows in the next chapter, the 144,000 are sealed and then they begin their duties. And so also remember, I did the little research there on when the Corona beardemic started taking place there in that Chinese city. And it was saying 2019. So I believe that in the year 2019, give or take, and it was after the Feast of Tabernacles, before the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Passover, that the seven-year period may start. Now it also mentions that days are going to be shortened. I do know that when our king returns, and I'm thinking, well, we'll get into that part, I don't want to pull too much of a spoiler here, so please buckle your seatbelts. If you didn't hear part one, I highly recommend you go back, give it a listen to. And remember how Star Trek actually tried to show, Satan always does, I think when Satan is finally defeated, when our king returns, she's going to say, oh, wait a minute, didn't I do everything for, I mean, look what I showed the people, I told them everything. Why are you holding it against me? It's my job. Why can't I have the kingdom too, you know? There's sort of pleading going on, not going to work. But Satan does show, you know, a lot of things that are going to come to take place in the future, but she depicts it in such a way that you should hate it when it comes. When the kingdom is sitting right there, well, there's a thousand-year millennial reign going on, it's going to be right there on the clouds as well. Everyone's going to be able to see it. It also says there will be pillars of smoke during the day and pillars of fire during the night. It's going to be a whole lot like the wilderness with Moses up there, okay? So with these things in mind, keep an open mind. Don't keep such an open mind that your brain falls out on the floor and then you got to get yourself all brainwashed. Don't open your head that far. You won't need to because there's plenty of scriptures that's going to prove things. And I've only done two parts on this so far, pre-recorded that is, wherein I'm going to have to be bringing forth the rest of the series. However, what I was being shown there toward the end was just overwhelming and I, I had to shut down the video. So with no longer ado, let's skidoo into part two. You know, and I kept wondering, is, you know, people ain't listening to us, Yahshua, you know. There's very few that can even hear our voice. They cannot see your words in the world, you know, but those that you allow to come here, they can see your words, but how are we going to save the entire earth? How are we going to proclaim to all nations, every tongue, your truth, <laughs> They're not listening to us now. What is going to bring forth anything? Is it when you pour out Holy Spirit on all flesh that they're going to then listen to us? And what was revealed to me, we'll get into later. But it should blow your socks off. It's just like so far out, man. So anyway, after that tribulation, the sun will be dark and the moon not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall. And the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then listen, it says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Now it doesn't mean 
that there's going to be this mile and a half tall Jesus coming down on the clouds where everyone's going to see him. But I say no. I mean, what our king has showed me here is where it's saying you're going to see the Son of Man coming. It's like any child, you know, that's waiting for their daddy to come home from work or their mommy to come home from work. And they can tell they're coming home from the do 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 of the motor or whatever. And they say, Daddy's home or Mama's home. And they might even look out the door and not see inside the windows there because there might be tinning to it. And they're just waiting for the door to open up so mommy or daddy can get out of the truck or the car or whatever to go on in the house. So when Yahshua returns, you're going to see the Son of Man coming, but it's going to be in a structure that is 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles tall, 1,500 miles long, you know? They're going to see the Son of Man returning just like our Messiah said he's going to, then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then, and then, he will send his holy Malachim and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. So the 144,000 are not all just on the earth right now. There are some of us I mean, Enoch was taken off, Elijah was taken off, the earth alive and brought someplace else, which I believe results in where it says he's going to gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of heaven. And again, I believe that the how we're going to be gathered may be with UFOs. Hopefully we're gathered first and then brought out to the farthest parts of heaven. That would be a cool trip, I'm telling you. And all this is going to take place, like it says here in Mark 13, 30, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. He told us, he said, if you want salvation, keep my commandments. If you want life everlasting, keep the commandments. And then he says here, will people twist to their own destruction to help keep them blind, I guess you can say, where it shows that heaven and earth will pass away. Yes, heaven and earth is going to pass away. When's heaven and earth going to pass away? But of that day and hour... Of what? When the earth and the heavens pass away. No one knows the day or the hour. Not even the holy Malachim in heaven, nor does Yahshua, but only the Father knows when that day is going to take place. But Yahshua surely knew all these other things that was going to take place. He knows when he's going to return. And then, of course, Yahshua leaves some other instructions here to keep me bringing forth these videos. And please do read all of Mark 13, okay? It says here in Mark 13, 13, which will show you that we have to do works, okay? I mean, it says, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. I mean, if you called on the Jesus, they'd all love you, you know? But because you call on our true king and do what he says, well, you're going to be hated, by all those of the world, not by your own brother and sister who keeps and lives by the every living word, but those who don't, they're going to hate you. It says, but he who endures, once saved, always saved. No, excuse me. It says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Well, why would someone have to endure any further than right now, you know, right at the moment that you accept the Jesus into your heart and believe in him so that now that you're saved, you're always saved. Just like Dulmer there and, oh brother, where art thou? But he who endures, meaning you got to work at it, you know, is something that you got to do to endure. He who endures to the end. So it's not just like today and maybe tomorrow that you have to endure, but right up until our king returns and raises the living and the dead. But it says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Doesn't say those that got saved right now, boy, you're always saved. 
It doesn't, the disciples never spoke of those things. Those are doctrines of devils. And sorry about my voice. My brother David gave me a call earlier, and I actually spoke to him for almost three hours on the telephone. Boy, my head started hurting. So let's take a second witness here in Matthew chapter 24. And again, I'd like to point out first thing, verse 13 says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Verse 12 says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. In other words, they're going to start sinning. And what I got to show you here about, you know, the great city coming here, and what the children in the wilderness went through, it's going to be a horrible thing when people turn away, but it does say there's going to be a great falling away before our Messiah does come. But there's something particular that you really need to see here. Matthew 24, verse 14 says, And this glad tiding of the kingdom, this every living word of your scriptures, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. You know, you got all the churches out there pulling these revivals and saying they're reaching the whole of all the nations. Well, you know, whatever they're doing doesn't matter anyway because it's not actually part of the work of salvation of our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son. In fact, all the churches are incorrect. All the religions out there, all the religious and the Christian Canaanites are wrong. They've got it wrong now I'm going to show you something here that our king showed me that I hope just blows your socks off. Think about it. Write down your answer or something, you know. Let me know what you thought this actually meant prior to what I'm going to show you is in the scriptures that tells you how this is going to take place. Because it's a teaching that goes 180 degrees away from the world's translation in ways that they keep in error concerning most of the prophecies, as well as the every living word. They don't know how to get salvation. They can say salvation. They, the, the word comes out their mouth just like repentance, but they haven't a clue as to what either of them are. So please, again, Mark 24, 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this glad tiding of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Well, how does that take place? Well, feast your eyes on this, my friends. Now, here in Revelation chapter 14, it's speaking of the 144,000. This is a vision that Yachanan's having that's showing him in the future, the 144,000 in that place. Well, I wasn't even born, you know, until 62 years ago. And yet, Yachanan, seeing me, hopefully Yahweh willing, standing on Mount Zion with our king at a future date from now. So, this hasn't taken place yet, but is going to take place pretty soon because where we're gathered at, it says, if two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there with them. So, Messiah is going to be with us, but I don't believe he'll be there physically. Physically, when he does return, he will, three and a half years later, raise the living and the dead. I know that might not make much sense, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. Anyway, these 144,000 are the ones who were not defiled with women. The children went a-whoring after the gods and the goddesses of the Canaanites when they went into the land of the strangers and yes we probably all were defiled with women at one time and we were certainly harlots as well you know whoring after the gods i was in witchcraft i've spoken these things before my life's an open book if i did it i did it and i done did it i'm telling you i was a whore but then through the schoolmaster the give or take 613 laws when you're turned over to our king you're a new creature. That's when you get forgiven of your sins. Is when you stop sinning. There's no reason to acquit you or to give you a pardon if you're still in the act of whatever sin you're doing. It's like a governor, you know, pardoning a criminal for murder. Well, he's still 
chopping some guy's head off, you know? It's not going to take place. You have to quit sinning in order to acquire that full forgiveness that we're hoping for. And we can never be sinless on this earth that is totally defiled. So yes, all men do sin. We have no choice in sinning, opening the door and sucking in the air from all the chemtrails and everything else. We sin without a desire, without a choice, but that's a reason why there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth before Yahweh Shema finally does come and sits down on the earth. However, the 144,000 here says these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among women. No, don't say women. These virgins were redeemed from among men, being first fruits of Father Yahweh and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of Father Yahweh. And why is that? Because they quit sinning. And of course, because in their mouth was found no deceit, and because they're found without fault, well, they just get sealed. And now their job and duty for three and a half years is going to take place. But how is it that we're going to get the message to all people of the earth, of every nation and tribe and tongue and people? I mean, there's an island out there. Well, I forget if it's near New Guinea or it's out there in the ocean. That's why it's an island. And they've got these natives that there's been shipwrecks on their shores. And these people would just wipe them out, okay? People have gone in there trying to bring them Bibles or other things, and they end up wearing arrow shirts, okay? There was an airplane that flew over them, and it didn't land. It just went on back to where it, the airport was, and when they landed, the bottom side looked like a porcupine. It had all these arrows just sticking out of it. These people want nothing to do with any strangers, and it really brings them pleasure to take your life if you choose to disobey their rules, okay? It's just how it works. Everyone has to have rules. But anyway, it shows these 144,000. They've been sealed. The law's been sealed in their foreheads, in their minds, to where all the laws, the every living word are written within us. And then look what takes place. It says, Revelation 14, 6, it says, then I saw another holy Malik flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting God spell. I'd rather say having the every living word to preach to those who dwell on the earth. Now get this, this Malik is going to be preaching to all these ones that are on the earth. It says to every nation tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear Yahweh and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the seas and springs of water. And another holy Malik followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third holy Malik followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand. Now get this. When these holy Malachim are going across the earth, and they're going to every nation, tribe, tongue, to every people, wherever they are, hidden in the Amazon forest or wherever it is, you got one holy Malik that is preaching this word that Matthew 24, 14 said, and this glad tiding, the every living word of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This was in no wise telling people to go out there doing their revivals and preaching to Jesus. It has nothing to do with it. Now, how the kingdom is going to be preached to all of them, it just showed. And I saw another holy Malik flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting 
every written word to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. That holy mail is going to everybody and going to explain the truth to them. This is why all nations will flow to the house of Yahweh to where we'll help them be trained up so that our Father's thoughts will become their thoughts, His ways their ways. They will seek His law, His house rules. But then you got the third one at that time frame. Please keep this in mind, my friends. This is at the time of the sealing that this is going to take place around that area throughout the earth, this third Malik is saying, beginning the last three and a half years of the tribulation, which is now the great tribulation, and everyone's out there saying, oh, we got the mark of the beast going, man. You, oh, you accept the Jabberwock, you got the mark of the beast. You do this, you got the mark of the beast. You got that going on, you got the mark of the beast. Well, it shows here when the mark of the beast is going to come about. Because now you got this third holy Malik that comes out after the 144,000 here have been sealed, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And you got these holy Malikim that are going out, preaching to the whole earth, telling them to come to the gathering. And you got this third holy Malik saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark, on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy Malachim and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image." and whoever receives the mark of his name. Please tell me you can see that. Who is it that's going to endure until the end so they can be saved? Please pay particular attention to Revelation 14, 12, where it says here is the patience of the saints, the 144,000, the elect, the chosen, as well as the children of the earth, and Enoch calls them, and all those that are going to come and wash off the robes and the precious blood of our king, entering into that new covenant where the laws are written in your inward part, where you've gone through the schoolmaster who's then turned you over to our Messiah, you become part of those that have this patience. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Messiah. Now, what is that faith of Messiah? Here in Galatians 3.23 says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Yes, you had to keep the law before faith comes to you. Why? This is wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. No, we don't need the law in a book or anything anymore because it's written in us. We're not going to sin because we've practiced so much not sinning that it becomes first nature in us. And when it becomes first nature in you, you get the faith. Here it's, but before faith came. Down here is, but after the faith has come. And when did it come? After the schoolmaster, which is the law, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the spirit of truth. It's brought to you to Messiah, so you might be justified by faith. And it says down here, wherein if you be Messiahs, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So anyway, I hope you're able to start tying all these things together. But as you've seen, the Holy Malik's going to fulfill this in Matthew 24, 14. And this glad tiding, the every living word of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then afterwards, the end is going to come. 
Here in uh, verse 15 it says, Therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads it, let him understand. Then there's other instruction that's taking place. And then it says, For then there will be great tribulation such as not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, for the sake of the 144,000, those days will be shortened. Now he talks about these false messiahs and such, and how there's those that are going to come acting as if they are the Jesus, you know, or they'll probably even come out saying, oh, I'm Yahshua, you know, next, I don't know, or Yehoshua or Yeshua, you know, and trying to deceive people. But our Messiah specifically said, he said, Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. And why is that? Because our king is going to come on the clouds, and not in any place it looks like that, other than the shape of it being square, wherein our king is coming to assimilate you through the teachings of his 144,000, his elect, and it says, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. I really don't have any understanding of what that is actually speaking of, but I pray that y'all will pray for it to come to understanding to where will understand what he's saying there. It may be the message as to the where we're going to be gathered, as, this, as it shows. But there's carcasses all over the earth, you know? So anyway, I haven't seen this lightning coming from the east and flashing to the west yet. Son of Man hasn't come yet. But anyway, here in Matthew 24, 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days... What days? Well, the first three and a half years that I believe the first rider of the four horsemen was in 2019 with the first seal being popped, beginning that three and a half years to where now it's immediately after that three and a half year period of time, that part of that tribulation, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. Again, in Revelation chapter 6, just before the sealing of the 144,000 in chapter 7, it shows, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to earth. So on and so forth. Read it on your own, please do. But immediately after the first three and a half years of the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Yes, it's going to be seen coming down 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles tall and thick. And it's going to set on the clouds. It's coming down in the clouds. The Son of Man is going to be in it with our Heavenly Father. And the world is going to try to attack it. But they haven't any weapons that can even put a dent into Yahweh Shema. In fact, our Father said he invented the blacksmith that brings forth the coals. He invented the coals. He invented the wasters and the weapons to destroy because he created the blacksmith. And he said, we don't have to worry about none of their weapons because they're not going to increase or have any effect on us unless our father wanted it to have an effect on us. We're protected. We're like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Being like Daniel thrown into the, you know, the lion's den. But anyway, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. The powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You see what it's saying there? I'm reading it so you can see it. I hope you can see it. 
But the Son of Man is going to appear in heaven. And he's coming down on clouds. And then all the tribes are going to mourn. Why? Because Holy Malachi sent out to proclaim the every living word to all nations and peoples and tongues and lands. And everyone's going to hear the truth. And when they do, then they're going to mourn because they know then everything they've been doing, all the LGBT LMNOPs, all the Jabberwockies, all those who will acquire the mark of the beast, all those who love to go to church on Sundays, her first days of the week instead of keeping the seventh day Sabbath, all those that loveth and teacheth a lie and practiceth it, they're going to mourn when they see this 1,500 mile square magnificent city coming down from heaven knowing that the bridegroom is coming. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now get a hold of this. And he will send his holy Malachim with a great sound of a trumpet. And why? And they will gather together his elect, his 144,000, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now tell me, did you ever see that in the scriptures before? Our king just showed it to me. And I'll tell you what, I've never heard this taught in any church. I've seen many of those that try to speak prophecies and speak directly against what is just shown here. But we're going to see what was being warned of back in 1989 before most of these movements have engulfed the earth today ridding the earth of silly things like morality and such, hiding the truth in plain sight. But now I hope you can see, and if you haven't watched anything about the Borgs, you should take a look at it at the, with the new eyes that you have, and look how these men have to go to war against the Borgs. And I'm not saying the Borgs are righteous. What I'm saying is this is the twist of whoever had that written, well, I know with Satan, or at least her spirits, that influenced the writers, the men, to write this movie. And the reason why it was such a hit was because of the Borgs. These Borgs are one collective body. And I want to point out here in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. I want to show you again why there isn't any of this Trinity thing that's actually factual. But it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all, what? One. Ye are all one in Messiah. And if ye be Messiahs, then you are Abraham's seed. And what did Abraham do? Genesis 26, 5, it said, because Abraham obeyed my voice. He kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and he kept my laws. So if you can hear my voice and what I'm saying and actually believe it and walk in it, then you are becoming, if not already are, one of Abraham's seeds. And you must keep that seed in you, you know, when you first heard the truth. Keep that seed and make it grow in the fertile ground. Okay, I'm going to want to have to talk about uh, the... Oh, with Moshe in the wilderness, the pillar of smoke, the pillar of fire. We're going to have the same things as well as the kingdom, the city sitting right there in the clouds. Well, as I told you at the beginning of the video and the introduction, and I didn't realize how far... My brain had got whacked there until I was doing the editing. And I did leave a little bit of that in there, but it was several minutes taking place where I just got flooded with information and, and there was no way I could even start to bring out even a portion of what I was shown. So please, you know, pray for the truth to be revealed in all things, especially about this gathering that is going to take place. We're going to see the kingdom coming in the clouds, but there's so much more that's going to take place at the gathering that's very similar 
but way, way greater than that which took place in the wilderness. So please think about these things. Study your scriptures. Ask our king to reveal these things to you even before I bring them out. You know, it'd be so great for everyone to be able to put these scriptures together. I mean, not saying that I'm doing it at all. I'm not. I'm not that intelligent. It's our king doing it. But by your obedience, you allow our king to lead you. And then all you got to do is follow him wherever he goes. And as you can see, the world hasn't a clue as to who our king is or who they're following because they're all out there being scared they're going to become Borgs and not think. Well, I think, you know, it's just my thoughts are now more in tune with our father's thoughts. And I have my own ways, you know, that are being cast off to put on our father's ways and his laws his truth is every living word let's pray that it all be revealed here soon and what i got to show you is really going to blow your socks off as you've seen my socks were blown off just a couple moments ago when all that information came flooding to me all at once and so now i'm going to have to get to recording part three and so i got to say i love you all Bye.